so you say about like you know loving each other and you know all of that thing um what about like the extreme muslims like the ones that are that are out killing each other that kind of thing what is the teaching of the quran about that because they say it comes from the quran as well yeah. Yeah, and you're so saying, like, love and peace does. Yeah, so uh, I mean every religion has people that are following it, its adherents, and then you also have people that try to twist scripture. Um, I mean the history of Islam, the history of Christianity and Judaism, I mean it's, it's filled with examples of people doing that. I'm sure that even in the name of Christ you have a lot of atrocities that have been committed, a lot of bloodshed throughout history. You might find examples of this, you know, today uh, among Muslims and even in the past. The reality is that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he warns us from all forms of extremism. And there's even one narration where the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he tells us that beware of extremism because it destroyed the people who came before you. Uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he also told us, like one time he gave a sermon to, the, to his disciples, and he said to them that the extremists will perish. The extremists will perish. The extremists will perish. So for us, we say... Uh, about the people that try to twist the scriptures of Islam, the Quran, and the prophetic tradition, we say about them what you would find any other faith tradition would say about extremists within their own uh, midst. So we would say that they're not following the correct way. Um, we condemn their actions, and I'm sure that you know. I'm sure you guys, as Christians, Mennonites, I'm sure you would do that for people that may do things in the name of Christ as well that you don't agree with. Um, now, are they human beings? Of course. I mean, should we pray for their guidance? We should, right? And, uh, and that's really one of the things that we try to do in the center, and that is to promote ed education and learning so that people can have a proper understanding of the Qur'an so that you won't have examples of people doing things like this. But I think it's very important to understand that, yes, will you find examples in history of every faith tradition, you know, people... Uh, claiming to be to be parts of those uh, traditions, and then they do heinous acts. I mean, you're going to find that as well. You look at the Spanish Inquisition. You look at you know many different examples of horrible things being done in the, in the name of Christianity. Um, you know, we would say that's not the way of Jesus. That's not the way of the Gospels. And I'm sure that you guys would say that as well. So really, I think the response would be very similar when it comes to dealing with extremists that claim that they're Muslims as well. So we pray for their guidance. We try to promote as much. Uh, knowledge and education as we can to protect people from having any sort of like crazy ideas, right? Um, Sheikh, you want to add anything? Yeah, I think it's a very good question. So one of the things that we want to remember is that on this earth, we've been given free will, which means anyone can take the Quran or the Bible and claim that they're following it and reinterpret it any way they like. It could be ideologically different. That's why we have many sects in every religion, because everyone thinks that their interpretation is correct. It could be through violent extremism, which exists. So this free will gives people the freedom. Like Hitler himself, he said that he was, he was inspired by Christ to do what he did when he killed all those Jews, right? No one says that, hey, you're a follower of Christ, right? Because people who are intelligent are going to look at, well, what does the teaching say? And what is this person doing? And so the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told us about these people. This is one of the prophecies, right? He said that these people will come and that their understanding of the Quran will not pass their throats, meaning it won't go to their heart. They'll just say the Quran, but they have no idea what its true meaning is. And the Prophet Muhammad called them the dogs of the hellfire. And he told us Muslims that if you were to see them, for, he told us to fight them. So the whole thing about ISIS and Osama bin Laden, we Muslims are commanded to fight them. And if you look at during these, the, the war on terror, if you want to call it, right? During this time, who were the people at the front lines fighting them? It were the Muslim countries. I mean, they don't get the media publicity about it, but they were the Muslims. There is no way that the other nations who came to the Middle East were able to do logistical operations without the help of Muslims, right? So you had Muslims on the ground who were fighting these people. And so I think it's, it's, uh, it's sad that, that we have people like this and throughout history, throughout all religions, but what we need to do is not commit a logical fallacy which was, which was perpetrated in the media after 9-11 that this is what the Quran teaches, right? 
and then we found so and so and there was a copy of the Quran in his car. Oh my God, so the Quran must be responsible for this, right? I mean, the Unabomber was a Christian. They found a Bible in his shack, right, or his place, whatever. And he had notes on the Bible. He was studying the Bible. Does that mean, you know, we would commit a logical fallacy to say that th those kinds of actions are coming directly from the Bible, right? And so we have in the Old Testament verses that talk about war. We have in the Old Testament verses that talk about the prisoners of war and so on and so forth, right? Because Moses was a head of state. And so he, he had to defend his state and there were battles, there were wars. The prophet Muhammad is a prophet like Moses in that he was also a head of state and he had to defend himself. There isn't a single battle that the prophet Muhammad did which was offensive, none. And I challenge anyone to bring a battle where the prophet Muhammad himself went and invaded a peaceful community or, or, or a tribe, etc. And so the verses that were talking about kill so-and-so and go after so-and-so was in response to the attacks and the invasion that was happening. So you can't take something from the Quran that says kill so-and-so and take out of context and all they're saying kill all non-Muslims. It doesn't make any sense, right? And so God wants us to use our intellect, right? So in Islam, a Muslim is allowed to marry a Jew or a Christian lady. They can marry a Jew or Christian lady. So if Muslims were to kill all non-Muslims, how can they have Jew or Christian spouses? It doesn't make any sense. How can we have non-Muslims living within the Muslims for centuries? How can we have the Ottoman Empire and, and we had Morocco receiving Jews that were expelled from Spain uh, uh, and taking them in and their families that are still living there today, generations after generations? So uh, part of the test of this life is that when God gave us this intellect, Part of this test is how are you going to use this God's gift? Are you going to commit logical fallacies in finding the truth and let your emotions and stereotypes and biases and, and the media uh, brainwashing programming to dominate? Or are you going to question and say, wait a minute, there has to be a logic to this. I need to research and look and question what is true. Like I know the, the Mennonites are interested in what is the true Christianity. Yes or no? That's a big thing with you guys, true Christianity. And so, which means that the intellectual analysis must be up there very high. And God wants that for us. For us to find out what is the truth, we can't commit, commit logical fallacies.